okay, I, I'm erasing this, but I just want to get a picture of where I'll, where I'll be going, and then uh, next time we, we, we understand better why we are doing all this. But basically, the point is that if the graph is very much expanded, if it's if the second largest eigenvalue divided by the largest eigenvalue is very small, then the graph is behaving very much like a random graph. That's the real meaning of, uh, of this mixing lemma, okay? And this was easier to see maybe in the, in the way I wrote it uh, after that. Okay, so let's now, let's write the proof. Uh, proof, let's, uh, for example, zero the square root of k1, k2, greater than lambda 1, which is, that's, this is the lambda, greater than lambda 2, lambda n minus 1, the last one, which is minus, and this is strictly minus square root of k1, k2, b, the eigenvalues of A. And let V0 up to Vn minus 1 be an orthonormal basis of eigenvector. Uh, so what I mean by that is that A VI is lambda VI and VI VJ We know that there exists such a basis because this is a symmetric matrix. Now here is, here is a, a, a good observation. Chi A and Chi B, the characteristic functions of A and B, respectively, then the number of edges between A and B, the number of them. Side, more precisely, is you take the matrix A, you multiply it by chi of B. So you can think of chi of B as a function or as, or as a vector, it doesn't matter, right? It's a vector of size n which gives 1 for the. So, the, so it's an n by n matrix A, it's, it's a square matrix, and then times chi of A, well, to be more precise, chi of, chi of A transpose. Let's see, let's see what, 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 why this is true. Okay, you want to, we want to say, I, I, I claim that whenever I have an edge between A and B, then th this uh, contributes, it contributes something here. Uh, why, why, why is that? Um, you, see, you take your matrix, the matrix tell you if there is a point, so let's see. Um, so I have here, so this, here I have ones for the A's, here I have zeros and, and say ones for the B, and here we have a, which whether they are connected or not. So, in order to get, if we if we multiply something here with something here, so what we should get? We should get here we sum up. Uh, let's see, we have like. Uh, Let's say, let's say that this is i here and j here. 
Okay, and the question is, do we have a map between I uh, and J if if I uh, okay, I'm tired, so I don't know how to say, but it's, it's, if you check it with an example, you see very quickly that this is cool. If it's I and J here, and you have one here, okay? So when you multiply, you see, when you multiply this, this vector, it has J here, then you get one, you get a contribution of one by multiplication of, of, of the of rho i by this vector, you, you got a contribution because you have j here. You have one in the j here. And this is not getting lost because when you do it, you get a vector of length n and you multiply here by one, so it survives because you have one here. It's probably not the best way to say it, but uh, everyone can convince himself. So let's uh, check it. I don't know what's the most elegant way to express it. Okay, but anyway, this is this is a this is a, a kind of a good observation, which helps because now we can really translate. We can easily translate. The combinatorial, this is the way to translate the combinatorial, the, the combinatorics to spectral information because if we write um, let's write chi of A as sigma A I V I I goes from zero up to A minus one. And write chi of B as sigma I goes from zero up to N minus one of B I and V I, right? We can write everyone using this autonomal basis. So what is chi of A transpose A times chi of B? This is equal, right, so this is EAB, is equal to chi of A transpose a time sigma of BI lambda i of b i, right? Because a of x b uh, a chi of b, since chi of b is sigma b i v i, if I apply a to this, and all these are eigenvectors, then each one of them would give me lambda i v i. Now I take this and I take the, the, the product, so this is like the inner product between sigma ai bi and sigma bi lambda i bi. Well, I have to say maybe here I should say j. But anyway, when, because vi and vj are orthogonal to each other, then what I'm left with is only sigma a i b i lambda i. That's what we get. So the number of edges between a and b is sigma a i b i times lambda i. So now we are ready to evaluate, we are ready to evaluate this sum. Uh, let's see, uh, recall that what is V0, what is the first vector? You remember that I told you what is the eigenvector. Oh, I erase this um, 
you remember that it was the, the, the eigenvector before, let's say, V0 tilde, before we normalize it, then this was a vector which gave us 1 over square root of K2 for x in V1 and 1 over square root of K1 for x in V2. Do you remember? Now we have to normalize it. So in order to normalize it, we have to, to normalize so that we will get, uh, we have to, to, to divide it by its norm. What is the norm of this vector? So V0 will be this V0 tilde divided by its norm. And this is equal so what's the norm? The norm, so this is V0, divide by the norm. What's the norm? The norm is V1 times 1 over square root K2 square plus V2, 1 over square root K1 square. This is equal, and then we have to take square root of all this. Do you agree? This is the norm of this vector. So this is equal to V0 tilde divided by uh, square root of V1 divided by K2 plus V2 divided by K1. Now you remember, there is a nicer way probably to write it. Um, and this is, okay, so let's see. I, sorry. I can write it in the following form. Uh, you remember that Recall that K1, V1 is equal to K2, V2, right? Because this is counting the edges from the left to the right or from the right to the left. So this means that what we, we get here like V1 over K2 is equal to V2 over K1, right? So, <coughs> So this is the same number twice. So what I can write, and I can do the following. This is equal. You see, if uh, let's 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 do it on the on the on the on the on the left hand side. On the left hand side, it's square root of k over two. So it's one over square root of k two, and then dividing this by twice by square root of twice v, uh, v1 over k2. So the k2 and the k2 are killing each other. And I'm getting 1 over 2 square root of v1. And in the same way, <coughs> In the other side, you'll get 1 over 2 square root of V2. Okay, this is all simple to think about. It's linear algebra. Okay. <coughs> I'm taking the value here and I divide it by this value now. These two are equal to each other. And one time it's more convenient for me to use, to use it as twice V1 over K2. And then the other time it's more convenient to use it as twice V2 divided by K1. Okay? Is it okay or not? <laughs> what? The two should be inside the square. Ah, the two should be inside the square, yes. It's just that it's just the, the, the square root k2 and the square root k2 will cancel each other. 
And in the next one, it will be the square root k1 and the square root k1. OK? OK, so it's all like simple, like really a one one, simple computation. Now, and, and also, I, I, I know exactly what is Vn minus 1, because we had, we had that little trick, right, that we understood that if, an eigen, if, you, if you have an eigenfunction for lambda, if you know the eigenfunction for lambda, then you know exactly the eigenfunction for minus lambda. You remember, that's what we saw before, that V of 2 is equal to 1. It's the same thing of square root of t v1 if x is in v1 and it will be minus 1 over square root of t v2 if x is in v2. Oh, yeah, that's not so good. This is v1 like capital V1. And we could have said this is vn minus 1 the vector. Okay, so we have a precise computation of V2 and V1. Okay. And now we can almost finish. Now, what we know? We know also that by definition, A1 is equal to the inner product of chi of a with v1, right? If I write a vector, if I write a vector k a using an orthonormal basis, a, so this is, so this is a zero. We know to compute this inner product. Why we know to compute this inner product? Because what is A? A is a characteristic function of a set A, which sits all the, the A sits on one side, on V1. Right? And I know the function V0. V0 is equal 1 over it's 1 over square root of 2v1 on v1. So if I take the inner product of it with a, so this is simply a divided by square root of the size of v1. Don't get confused with, with the capital V1 and the small v1. OK? And, and, simil and similarly, B0, which is the chi of B against V0. So again, we know exactly what is V0. V0 on the right-hand side on V2 is equal to 1 over square root of 2V2. And then if we take an inner product with chi B, chi B give you 1 on B and 0 elsewhere. So this, in, this uh, inner product is simply equal to B over 2 square root of B2 this time. OK, so we computed the first. And similarly, a n minus 1 will be equal to minus a divided by, let's see, if we, if we look, let's do it, a, a n minus 1 is the inner product of chi a with v n minus 1. We know that Vn minus 1 on the first part is equal to V0. So the, this inner product is exactly as before. So it's also equal to A over 2V1. On the other hand, we, we compute Bn minus 1, which is k 
psi of b with v with the vector vn minus 1, we know that the vector vn minus 1 on the right hand side is minus from v0. So here it will be minus b divided by <coughs> 2v2. Are you with me or I lost you? I mean, it's a completely trivial thing. I mean, every, every other one is uh, very simple, just to follow. Okay, and uh, now we have a few more lines, though, and we are finishing. Because now, once we know all this computation, we can do the following. What we know? We know that Um, so now look, so now look at what is A1, B1, lambda 1, A, A0, the first and the last. A1, A1, A0, B0, lambda 0, plus a n minus 1, B n minus 1, lambda n minus 1. Let's, let's compute this. So we know what is A0. Right? What is A0? This is A divided by square root of 2 P1. And what is B0? It's written here. It's B divided by square root of 2 B2. And then we have to multiply it by lambda 0. We also know what is this. This is square root of K1, K2. Right? Plus, plus An minus 1. An minus 1, we also know what it is. It's basically the same thing. So it's a over square root of 2v1. But here we have to be careful. Now, bn minus 1 is the same thing with minus. Minus b divided by 2c. B2. And now we have to multiply by the last eigenvalue, which is lambda n minus 1. But what is the last eigenvalue? is minus, so it's minus square root of k1, k2. So this minuses and minuses are going out, and we are getting the same value twice. And, and the same value twice, if we multiply this by this, we get, so we get twice square root, uh, twice a, b, divided by square root of 2 is going out of b1, b2, times square root of k1, k2. Okay? And this is what we get. But this is exactly what is written here, you see? Are you with me? Which means that the left hand side, so now to prove the lemma, we got that E A B minus, that's what we want to evaluate. Square root of K1, K2 is just written divided by B1, V2 times A times B. This thing is, you remember, sigma a, b is exactly sigma a, i, b, i, a lambda i, lambda a, i goes from 0 up to n minus 1. And this is a 0, b, 0, lambda 0 minus a, n minus 1 bn minus 1, lambda n minus 1. 
So really this difference is simply the sum over all i except of the last, the first and the last. Kind of the truncated sum. I'm, 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 I'm uh, leaving out the trivial eigenvalues. The one, the, the, lamb, the contribution of lambda zero and lambda n minus one. That's exactly what we are, we are taking out from the game here. So this is equal. So this is equal to the sum i goes from 1 up to n minus 2 of a i, b i, lambda i, all this and i have well in it. Absolute value. But now we know that all the lambda i, so I can put this is at most sigma a i, B i absolute value lambda i i goes from one up to n minus two, and this lambda i is less than our lambda. Right? Because lambda was the second largest eigenvalue, I I I got out the two largest eigenvalues, square root of k1, k2, and this is a symmetric spectrum. So if lambda was the, the second largest eigenvalue, all the other eigenvalues in absolute value are all of them less than lambda. So this is at most lambda times sigma i goes from 1 to n minus 2 of a i, b i, absolute value. This is at most lambda uh, square root i goes from 0 up to a minus 1 of a i b i in absolute value. Now, I, now I'm putting everything back to, uh, together because I don't mind. And now Cauchy Schwarz, right? Cauchy Schwarz tells us this is the inner product. of a i and b i, so this is at most a, this is at most lambda square root of the norm of a square root of the norm of b Well, you know, I have to be a bit careful maybe here. I have to put, I have to do it like that. I have to get lambda out, but keep this like that still. It doesn't matter because... Uh... No, I, do I know that the A, I don't know the A, I and B, I are positive. So I have to be a bit careful, no? You could take the absolute values anyway when you compute the norm, so... What, what? You compute the norm of chi a, then you could take the norm is. Uh, yeah, but, I, but, but, but how, why I'm allowed? I, I, I have to be careful that I'm allowed to add the a one. Well, a one a a a zero times b zero. Okay, so I have to know, but, but I, I calculated. Oh. Uh, Ah, actually, this was zero. They, they, they cancel each other. I think it's equal even, no? Because what is A0? A0, B0, you remember? A0 was equal to AN minus 1, and BN minus 1 is minus B0. So A0, B0 plus AN minus 1, BN minus 1 is equal to zero. Ah, there's something, to, there's something here to be careful. Okay, so, so this is really equality. Since, you remember, we, have, we, we computed, I erased it, by a n minus 1 was exactly the same as a 0. On the other hand, b n minus 1 was minus of b 0. So a 0, b 0 plus a n minus 1, b n minus 1 is equal to 0 because this is equal to this and this is the minus of this. So when I write here from 1 up to a minus 2, it's the same as writing it from 1 up to, up to, up to. OK. 
Okay? And now I can use Cauchy Schmaltz, and then I'm getting, now, now it's easy to compute. This is lambda. The, the norm of A is simply the, the, the size of it, and the norm of B is the size of it, lambda square root AB. This is exactly what we promised. Right? This and the OK, I think I will finish here. I won't stop there. Next time, let me see if I have something to say. Oh, I still have something to say about the graphs. Well, we will see. Maybe we'll do it next time or we'll uh, postpone it. Yeah, okay, I'm too tired to continue.